Today we have a new video and today we're gonna talk, like I already explained back on LinkedIn and on YouTube, about electric motors. There is a different ways approaching the electric motors and you will see soon that we have here quite a few different modules. So on the one hand we have our training system basically here where we are simulating different states of the electric motor or different conditions more or less. And furthermore we also have a real electric model here which is just right beside me. So this model over here shows from an ID4, Volkswagen ID4, the front drive with a complete electric motor here as an asynchronous motor basically. But you see the complete unit and later on we go exactly into more detail about this unit and about these modules. Then let's have a look at the modules which we have here. So we have quite a few, they look pretty different, but what is, what is the big difference is about what's in the different modules. So the basic thing is you see our electric motor over here and we have our real connection like you would see it on a real engine basically. So this is just the ground connection. There is no, nothing like that on the real motor, but just to, to make sure that we have the ground connection over here. When we have a look at the real motor, you will see that this is exactly what we find here. So the different three connections from there, from the modules you see now here at the engine. And everything else around here, which is, what is not painted, can be used as the ground connection. Then, when we have a look down here, we see there's a different way of connecting the different coils from the stator with each other. On the right hand side we have the star connection, so you see the different coils are connected as a star, where they have the star point in the middle. And on the left hand side we see the delta connection. So there we don't have a star point because all the coils are connected here on this way with each other. The, the big thing about this one is um, you can't see from the outside if you have a delta or a star connection and this just depends to the car manufacturer. So when we think about now what's the difference between da, uh, delta and star, sorry, it's like you can't say that only one thing or one type is used in the cars. It's more like it depends on the whole strategy of the car manufacturer, what you do at the engine basically or at the electric motor. So you can say when you have a delta connection that you can create more torque and more power. So electric motor in delta connection is just better for getting the maximum power and the maximum torque out of it. But on the other hand, the star connection, it guarantees that there is a smoother running of the engine and it's just easier to do. So you don't need to, you don't need to worry too much about what's in the electric motor. It's just, it can either be the star connection or the delta connection, okay? And like I said, with the star connection, you, it, it consumes less power, but with the delta connection, you have a higher power output. And it just depends on the strategy of the car manufacturer, what they will establish in their car. Now let's have a look what we can measure at the electric motor. So like I said at the beginning, today's topic is about thinking what kind of measurements we can do at electric motor in order to find out if it's in good condition or if something is wrong with the motor. So okay, let's have first a look what kind of measuring tools we need. And this is pretty basic. You see here on the right hand side, it's our insulation meter. So the insulation meter basically on the one hand of course it can go in a very high area like you see it here in the mega ohm area where we want to measure a really high voltage. And the voltages which you see here are depending on the system's own voltage. So for example if you measure at the high voltage system which has as a maximum voltage 800 volt you have to use 1000 volt here. But if the system just have 400 volts for example, you can use the 500 volt option. So that's on the one side for the mega ohm area, so for the insulation resistance. But if we take a measure on electric motor, it's also interesting to measure 
the resistance of the coils basically. And they of course are not in the mega ohm area, but in a very, very low ohm area. And this is why we just go here, for example, to the normal ohm area in order to measure it. You just have to see how low your measuring tool can go. But this depends, like I said, on each individual measurement tool. And just make sure that the tool can measure this low area of resistance. So in the picture, now you see animation who will show you how the electric motor works or more or less how the magnetic field, the rotating magnetic field is created through or within the stator and through the three different coils who are controlled by the inverter. You see, you see that all the different coils have a different or have a same sinus voltage regarding the amplitude, but there's a phase shift. And you have the first coil, the second coil, and the third coil. They are always with a gap or with an angle of 120 degree. So everything together will lead to 360 degree. And now you see with this arrow from the last animation how the rotating field is created. And this field, of course, attacks at the rotor and starts the rotor to spin. And it doesn't matter if it's a static or if it's an asynchronous or a synchronous rotor. So that doesn't make any difference, the stator always works the same. Now let's have a look when we just measure the normal resistance of the coils within the electric motor. So we will, in order to make it a little bit easier, we will measure down here, at first at the delta and then at the star connection. So the multimeter or the insulation meter here has now also the low voltage measurement area. Uh, not the low voltage, sorry, the low ohm or the low resistance measurement area. So this is perfectly good for us. And now we are checking what the resistance of these coils are. And I just do the measurement and you see it's pretty low. So it's below one ohm basically. And when we now go through the different coils here, you see we have, it's it always depending on, you see that there are different values, for example. But this also had to do basically that you're not able to measure the coils just independently. So you have to see, you measure this coil, but also this coil, as they are connected, they have an effect regarding the resistance, as they, these two are in series, but they are parallel to this one. But in general, you see, you have a really low value. And the correct value for the coils you can, for example, get out of the cost documentations or the manufacturer's documentations. They will tell you, or they can tell you, what kind of resistance the coil should be and that they are okay. So let's have a look now at the star connection. So here, of course, we can, on the one hand, we can measure two coils within one measurement as these are in series now. So basically this also would be the measurement when you would measure up here at this U, V, W point as you don't have the star connection here. But there we see we will always measure the resistance of two coils basically. Okay, this will be of course different when we just go to the star point and we measure now from here. And in this case now, we can measure just one coil in that case. There you see. Okay, so these are just fundamental information. So you have a pretty low resistance and depending of course on the coils, what you have there, but it must be definitely in that case under one ohm. And in order to get the important values or the correct values for each car, or for each electric motor, you have just to refer to the car manufacturer's documentation. So, the next measurement value is also in the area of resistance, but now we go from really low to really high, because now we want to measure the insulation resistance. So let's have a look. When we are talking about the insulation measurement, it's really important to understand what are the different, basically, networks which are used, or how the systems are connected with each other, or basically with the ground connection. So when you take a look around, even in the building where we are, of course, we have a normal house installation. So in that case, you are talking of an NT, so it's French word, I don't try to speak it, 
um, but it's an NT network. That means you have a common ground where everything is connected to. So, and this is also why when you are just, as you are connected with Earth basically, when you now do something stupid with a power socket and you put your finger or a metal thing into the socket, you will get electrocuted. The big difference for the high voltage system is that you have an IT network there. So IT means it has its own ground and it's completely isolated from the rest of the system. So that means even when there's one fault in the IT network or in a high voltage system, you won't get electrocuted when you get in touch with it as you don't connect with the circuit basically. You can't connect there as there is no common ground. The common ground or the ground of the high voltage system is absolutely isolated from the rest. Let's have a look at the meter what we are doing here. We're switching now from the ohm area to let's say 500 volt. Of course we don't have now a real, um, a real high voltage system behind it, but let's just let's say it's 500 volt. But be careful, now we have to change the position of the plug here because it has to go to insulation, otherwise we won't measure anything. So while the output voltage for the low resistance measurement is also pretty low, though a few volts maybe, we have now really the output voltage what we see here. So when I now click on test, I will create 500 volts between these two points. All right, so let's check what the system says. Now when we want to measure the insulation resistance, we don't go just into the electric motor because now we want to check the car chassis or how the car chassis is insulated regarding the high voltage system. And that's why we're now going from the high voltage system to the car's ground. And let's just have a look when we now go on test. And we see now it's perfectly fine. We have a resistance above 550 mega ohm. So that means the resistance is so high that the system or the insulation meter with this output voltage cannot go higher or cannot measure higher. Just as a test, when we now go to 1000 volt, you will see that the value will change. Now it says it's even above 22 giga ohm. Just because like this is the the upper value, the upper border, what the system or what this tool can measure by using 1000 volt. But we go back to 500 volt, so that means it doesn't matter where I measure now because everything is connected with each other. I will always have the same insulation resistance and this is okay. Now let's jump over up to here. And here it's pretty much the same. So we are again here at the car's ground and now we go into the electric motor and also measure here the insulation resistor. And there you see, same thing, there is no insulation problem. The insulation resistor is above 550 mega ohm, so that's perfectly fine. And like I said, doesn't matter where I go, I always have the same. And now I can even go up here and do the measurement at this stage. And also here, no, res no resistance problem, no insulation problem. Everything's perfectly fine, okay? So this would be the point which you would use at the real electric motor, but we will do that later on our real model. So, okay, now we have checked the system or the modules under good condition. So when everything is fine in the electric motor. Let's have a look now when, we, when there's a problem in the electric motor. So this is why we now go from the good ones, which we have here. So we get rid of this. And we take now some faulty ones, basically. Uh, let's go here. So all of these ones, as, so the other three ones here as well, they are all faulty. They have different faults in it, but we are focusing now on these three different components, okay? So, what we have here, you see it from the outside, there's no difference, but now we're gonna check if there is a problem regarding the insulation resistance, or even if there is a problem directly inside the stator, so with the coils, basically. And we will see, 
yeah, how we can find out and see what's going on there. Okay, let's have a look now what, what the problem is of this module. So what fault do we find at this module? And we starting with the insulation measurement just because it's the most common one. So let's have a look. We go here to car's ground. We are 500 volt here, right connection. And now we just check what's happening inside here. So when we test now, and there you see already, so the breakthrough voltage is already at 65 volt. And we just have a resistance of 0.036 mega ohm. So way too low. That means this unit has, a, of course, an insulation problem. And it does make a difference now where I do measure. I will always have the same faulty value as you see it here, as everything is connected. So also, when I would measure up here, I would go now here and here. And there as well. So here we can clearly say that we have a problem with the insulation resistance and this won't work, okay? So that means this electric motor needs to be repaired. Now we're gonna have a look at the two other modules, what, what is wrong there? So let's get rid of this one. And let's take these two. So what about these ones here? We have on the one side the module again with the star connection and on the other hand we have the delta connection, okay? And again we start with the insulation resistance measurement. Let's go here and let's go here. And when we now do the measurement, oh we see that's fine, okay, perfect, no problem with the insulation measurement. Let's have a check as well at this one here. So we just use this connection. And this is also perfectly fine. This measurement tells us so that we don't have an issue here with the insulation measurement. So that means the isolation or insulation between the high voltage system and the 12 volt system or the normal ground system of the car is fine. No safety issue or anything like that here. But we know now that there is a fault inside these electric motors. So we have now to focus inside the stator, for example. And we just start with a normal resistance measurement. So this is why I now switch the connection to ohm measurement and go over here. So we're good to go. Let's have a look. When we measure now the normal resistance over here, we see that the value looks, yeah, it's of course a little variation in here, but like I said, that's also about how the coils are connected, but everything, all the values are pretty low. So you don't have a high resistance, which really will tell you that there is a fault inside the electric motor. Let's jump over here and we just check it also in that case. And here we have also pretty low measurement values. So I just do it from the start point here that you really see the single coil. So that's basically all good. So the question is now, what is wrong with these electric motors as we know there is a fault and what different ways do we have in order to find out where the problem is? And in order to answer that question, we need to use another measurement tool. Now we have a look at this other measurement tool, what I told you about. And we won't measure now a classical voltage or a classical resistor. What we have here is a so-called LCR meter. And let's just let's have a look what this is about. So the LCR meter looks in the first place like a normal multimeter. But we are now focusing the left side and you see here the unit is Henry. So Henry is for inductance and it shows us it's like a dynamic resistance and it shows us the inductance of the different coil. If you want to have a deeper dive into what inductance is, please just go to YouTube or to Google and just do a Google search on inductance and Henry. 
and there you will find out what this really is. So it's like, it's, it's like kind of a dynamic resistance of the coil. It will, or it somehow explains you, or it somehow means how much resistance it is put into a change of the condition. So either when you have a coil and you want to build up the um, current flow, the inductance will work against it. And if you shut down the current fl flow from a coil, then it also works against the cutting of the current. So this is kind of the behavior of the inductance. It always try to, yeah, operate the opposite or behave the opposite what happened to the coil regarding the current flow. So pretty easy explanation, not perfectly, not uh, complete technically, but if you want to have more detail, please just have a look at Google or an, at any other book regarding electrotechnics. So now we have a look at the, at the one here, at the measuring unit, and we switch now, just let's say, to 60 millihenry. And we have measured before the normal resistance of the coil, and we saw there's no difference. So even when there's a short circuit into the, in the coil, that basically the function of the coil is completely eliminated, you still, or you measure still, a really low electrical resistance regarding ohm, okay? So when you just measure the ohm, you can't really say now if this is the normal resistance of the coil or if there's a short circuit in the coil. But let's see what happens now when we do a measurement regarding the inductance inside the stay drop. So, therefore, we do not need the car chassis, of course. We are just operating inside the electric motor. Before I put this now in, just make sure inductance behaves pretty similar like electrical resistance is doing. So, if you have a resistance in series, it will add each other, or it will add to, it will sum up, you just add it to each other. If you have it parallel, then it's more complicated and you can check out the measurement or the calculation for this as well. So what you see here, it's, but it's the same like the resistance. We measure now this coil, for example. So you have this coil, but you have parallel these two coils and with these two coils in series. So you would add the inductance of this one and this one and this sum will be parallel to this coil. And now you have to do the math in order to calculate what's really the inductance of one coil. As what you measure here is only the, um, yeah, the result of the whole measurement. But you will see when there's something wrong with the coils, you even see it in this interconnected situation. So let's have a look. We are now connecting this coil over here and we see we get an inductance 4.3. That sounds good so far. Now we switch over to here. And there you see similar inductance 4.3, perfectly. So like I said, but before, this is not the inductance of one coil, this is the inductance of the whole circuit here. But now, let's have a look here. And there you see now, we have basically zero inductance, just a little bit more. It's not completely zero. This is because of the other two coils, which are here and which are okay. But now we have to focus on this coil. And this coil has a problem. Obviously, it has a short circuit and it doesn't work as a coil anymore. So when you would use this electric motor in the car, you would have an asymmetric buildup of the magnetic field, which will cause heavy vibrations. So you don't want to drive such an electric motor. This is really, really bad. So, but here we found out now, okay, this coil is broken and basically the stator must be repaired. Let's jump over to the other system here as well. So here it's pretty similar. Like, at first let's have a look at from the star connection, but remember we can't measure from the star connection inside the real car. So when we go here, we measure now the actual inductance of one coil, which is here 8.887 or something like that. So when we go down here, you see it's pretty similar, basically the same. And now I just want to uh, show you how 
the coils react or what I explained to you before, because when I go now to here, you see the value doubled more or less. So that's the point where you say this inductance is added to this inductance and we measure just the overall value. Here's nothing parallel right now because this one is not connected. So, and now we go back to the star point and go now to this connection. And there you see same issue like at the other one, zero Henry. So zero inductance, this coil is also short circuit. That means there is a problem with this coil and it also needs to be repaired. Just let's check when we now would measure from the outside perspective. And there you see the trick now, when you know you have a star connection, you now must say, oh look, even if I measure an inductance, I just measure one inductance of the one coil, basically of this one. And now I can go through everything. When I go from here to here, I also measure one inductance. And now when I jump over to here, you see again, I measure two inductance. So the value is 18, which reflects both systems. And now you know where the problem is just through making the different measurements. So we see we have the big value here or the high value between these two points and we have the low value between those, sorry, between those two points. That means it doesn't matter, the low value is always part when this coil is part of the measurement and when this coil is not part of the measurement, the inductance is fine. So that would mean this coil is broken, short circuit, and also needs to be replaced or repaired. Now just let's have a quick look. What is the difference between the measurement or the way how the, this one is measuring the value and what we said before about the insulation meter, how this is measuring the value. When we see here again, like I said, we, you measure Henry and not normal voltage or resistance or anything like that. So in order, as this is not a static value, but a dynamic value, we can't work with DC voltages at the output. So when you would put this to a oscilloscope, you would measure an AC signal basically. Depending on the, on the value, what you want to measure, it just depends it has different frequencies basically, but you always have an AC signal in order to measure this dynamic resistance, yeah, which is typical for the coil and what we call inductance. And now as you have seen what we have measured on the different modules, we now just drag all these information to the real model which we have here. So like I said at the beginning, the three connections which you see at the modules are basically here. So that's our U, V, W. And we start now, when you have a look here, with the insulation measurement. That means, again, we have to go over here. And now we connect to, basically, the metal, some, something from the car's ground. And then we go over here and do the measurement. And there you see no insulation problem. Now we can also go to the other coil and you see it's everything the same as everything is connected with each other. Now let's switch over to the low resistance measurement just to give you an idea what about the different uh, windings here and the difference. So we change the measuring mode and go over here. So now we have to measure from the outside so we can go up here and we see really low resistance, pretty similar to the ones or to the resistance we measured at the coil. So then we go from here to here and to here. What do you think? Is this a star connection or is that a delta connection? Write it in the comments. In the last step, we are going to measure the inductance of this motor. And you will see that this is much lower at our modules, for example. So like I said, there's always depending on the car manufacturer what they do. But for us, the actual value is less interesting as we find out because of the different connection, like delta and star connection. You even cannot say really 
what the inductance of one coil is properly, but we can see if there are big differences or everything is pretty much the same. So let's have a look at this one. You see here, I switched to micro Henry. And now when I measure the different things here, you see we have here 108 micro Henry, for example. And when we go over here, 112, so basically in the same area, and then we go to the middle, 107. So everything is pretty much the same. So like I said, it's hard to say now how they are connected with each other, but we see there is no completely loss of the inductance and we measure at every point uh, quite the same value, which will tell us that this motor is absolutely fine. So I hope this was interesting for you and you got some more or new information about what you can do in electric motors. If you want to go into more detail, just let us know. And if you are interested in getting these modules, of course, they are free to sell. And we are happy if you want to know or have more information about this, just feel free to ask. But right now, I wish you a great day and have a great time. See you soon.